Right, grade 12, and this is the fourth lesson on this production cost statement. We are now going to complete the statement. Remember, we got as far as getting the prime costs, the direct costs. We worked out the factory overheads and we got our total manufacturing costs for the year. But following the exact same principles as we did with direct material and indirect material, some of these goods might not have been completed. And we want to now, once we've manufactured these, we want to sell them. And we can only sell finished goods. So having got our total cost for the year, what we've spent, we need to see how much of that equals finished goods. And so the first thing we'll do is to add on our work in progress that we were given at the beginning of the year. So amongst our opening balances, we had work in progress of 18,300. That was the value of the goods that were in the production line from last year, but had not yet been completed. So you're going to start the year first completing those and they will go into the finished goods first of all. But you will notice that there's no balance at the end of the year. So we'll bring in the work in progress and we can add it on. Now, once we've added that on, we now need to, what we need to really do is subtract what's still in in progress at the end of the year. The accountants would need to do an estimate of what the value is and then the difference is what is going to the finished goods. But at this stage we don't have that so therefore we can't complete this either. Now this value that we can't calculate over here, the cost of finished goods, the amounts that are completed in the factory, will leave the factory and will go into the finished goods account. Now the finished goods account is very much like the trading stock account that you've always had to have dealt with. In other words, if we've got an opening stock of finished goods, we've got an opening balance of goods that are already in the finished goods or like trading stock we used to have, and then we would add on to it the value of the goods that have come from the factory. Remember we're not buying the goods this time, we're producing them. Less our closing stock, and that'll give us the cost of goods that have left the shop, which in other words would be our cost of sales. So you've got some stock in the in at the beginning, some further goods come in from the factory, you've still got some goods left over which have not been sold, and therefore the difference is equal to the goods, the value of the goods that have been sold, or your cost of sales. Now if we look on the exercise sheet over here, we were given a stock of finished goods at the beginning of the year of 27 and at the end of the year of 24,300. So the 27,000 at the beginning is given to you. The 24,300, which has not been sold, so we will put it into brackets, will be shown next to the closing stock. Now we've still got two missing figures. And as I say, we can't get this figure. But let's now look at the sales, the cost of sales in actual fact. And an old calculation that you've always done is to take the actual sales figure and work out the cost of sales. And you are given here that the total sales for the year is 2,400,000 and that the business uses a markup of 60% on cost. So 2,400,000 times 160 over 100 because we remember the 2 million includes the cost price of the goods we can therefore calculate our cost of sales of 1 million 500,000 that's the, the cost price of the goods that have been sold and therefore once you've got to that point you can work out the missing figure so you had 27,000 plus some extra goods minus 24,300 equals 1.5 million. So do the calculation on your calculator. We normally start at the bottom, 1.5 million, working backwards, so we plus 24,300, minus 27,000, and this missing figure comes to 1497,300. So I presume you remember your cost, basic cost of sales calculation. Now these two figures here, this one and this one, are very important and they, they, they're different.
and important to realize first of all the goods have got to come in and then you can sell them so in order to complete it having worked out now the value of the goods that have gone into the finished goods that is the final figure this is that's the amount that it will have gone out of the factory see it is a flow it leaves the factory and it goes into finished goods and then out it goes to the customers as it's sold and once you've got this and we've had this a couple of times now the difference between these two will give you your work in progress at the end of the year 21,710 so and quite a few times in this exercise we've had to work back and find missing figures it is a skill you need for the exam so while I'm doing it in connection with production cost here, you must remember it in context of any section where you fill in the figures you've got and you find the missing figures. Right, that just leaves us then with the abridged income statement, which I will do in the next video.